Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's track guide for the IRO4. We are here at Monza for what should be a week of very interesting and tight racing. Monza is known for its super long straights and super high speeds. So because of that, we're going to have a lot of draft, a lot of pack racing, a lot of overtaking, and a lot of defending. That said, because we're talking about super long straights and high speeds, we really need to be focused on our exits pretty much around the entire track at Monza. We have already done a track guide for Monza in the past, so this week's lap is actually recycled from that track guide, but we're going to go ahead and update some of the editing to the things that you guys are used to, like replays in corners that should help you process what's going on a little bit better. That said, we're recycling the lap and the lessons from that lap because our concepts for how we approach each of these turns should not change season to season, regardless of how track temperatures or track conditions change. That said, we will still talk about what the track conditions are, so you know, so if you want to emulate them from what I'm doing, you can absolutely do that. I should also start uh, plugging and shilling for myself ahead of the track guides instead of at the end, so if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe below. Uh, so you can get notified when I come out with new track guides. If you haven't come and watched me on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash Elgato Coma Pipa. There is a link in the description below, along with links to uh, this lap on Garage 61, uh, discords, a discount on maradness.com using my promo code. So check out the description if you want any of that stuff. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the lap before we dive into the details corner by corner. Before we get started, let's take a look at our track conditions. We have a 26 degree Celsius track with 24 degree air temperature and moderate usage at 45%. This week we also do have a rules tab, so I would check out the rules tab just so you know where the track limits are at each corner uh, so you could avoid getting 1Xs um, or slowdowns in some places. Slowdowns aren't a huge deal at Monza, uh, but getting off tracks are, especially on your qualifying lap, you want to make sure that you don't invalidate your lap by running a little bit too wide. As for our laps, once again, we are recycling our laps from last season. Um, I did a little bit more than a full tank of fuel in this particular test session. So you can see right here on lap 17, I did have to come in for fuel. Uh, just a quick splash and dash to finally set this lap of a 152.267. When I was doing these laps last season, I was struggling a little bit uh, for consistency. Last season, I'd never actually raced uh, a racing lap at Monza, so uh, it took me a little while to get uh, into the groove here, more so than tracks that I have raced in other series. But anyway, the lap that we are going to analyze is this 152.267. So let's go ahead and look at that now. Now, 
Monza's three chicanes are all pretty different but require a similar approach. Despite the different entry speeds for each, our goal is always to enter the first apex at a speed and orientation that enables us to get a good exit. The turn one chicane is the slowest of the three. We brake from sixth gear down to second gear between the end of the hedges and the 100 meter board here on the left hand side. Our focus is on avoiding running deep into the corner and getting as much rotation through the first apex as we can to reduce the amount of rotation to get back towards the second apex. As we turn in, we're aiming to place the car in the middle of the Italian flag curbing. If we run deep on entry here or in any of the chicanes, we're going to have to fight the car too much to set it back up to get to the second apex and we'll have a very compromised exit. It's important to be patient here when getting to the second apex, with our goal being to get on throttle as soon as we can without running wide on exit into the gravel. Touching the orange sausage curb at the second apex or running wide into the gravel will unsettle the car and compromise our exit for the long flat out run through Curva Grande. It's also important to note that using the runoff ahead of you if you're going to run deep into turn one is possibly the best option instead of trying to make the corner and potentially losing the car and crashing. Taking this evasive action will give you the best opportunity to continue your race even though you'll get a slowdown penalty. Through Curva Grande, we want to stay tight to the right-hand side to reduce the amount of track we use in our run up to the second chicane. Heading into the second chicane, we have a similar goal to the first chicane of getting good rotation into the first apex while avoiding running wide. We're braking right around the 100 board and shifting down into third gear. The entry is a little bit faster than the first chicane as we aim to start getting back on throttle at or just after the apex, once again placing the middle of the car over the Italian flag curbing. Heading into the second apex, we're looking to get to full throttle while placing our right tires on the apex curbing, aiming to just barely avoid the orange sausage curb, which can push us wide on exit or unsettle the car. The exit once again tests our precision as we aim to avoid running wide into the gravel while staying full throttle. As with turn one, if you do find yourself running too deep, it's best to avoid the anti-cut curbs here by taking a controlled route through them and rejoining safely on exit. The first Lesmo corner is a tricky one because we have a blind exit, meaning we can't spot our exit once we get to the apex. The goal here is to apex late, carrying good speed in and waiting to commit to throttle just before we come to the end of the barrier that runs along the apex. There's not a great turn in marker and a braking marker, but here I'm aiming to turn in and start slowing a few moments before we reach the orange marked end of the barrier here on the right or the left, or the access road on the left up ahead. As with every Monza corner, exit is a priority here. We want to use all of the exit curbing, keeping our right tires in contact with the Italian flag curbing to avoid a 1x. It's important to hit the apex here and in the second Lesmo because there is camber that helps us maintain speed through the corner and avoid running wide. We also want to be patient as we head through the apex so you can see we actually do coast for a little bit as we wait to get back on throttle. We approach the second Lesmo in a similar way as with the first, prioritizing a good exit here as we have a long run to the Ascari chicane. The camber in the apex is a little more pronounced than in the first Lesmo, so we can take a little bit more speed through the apex here. We aim to brake slightly around the 50, shifting down into fourth as we ease the car into the cambered apex. We want to commit back to throttle right around or just after the apex, once again using all of the curbing we can on exit.
The Ascari Chicane is the third and fastest at Monza, but our focus is the same. Exit, exit, exit. We're going to start by breaking around the 100 meter board as we once again aim to rotate the car enough into the first apex that we can commit to throttle as soon as we get there. We want to make sure that we can stay on throttle once we commit to it here. Running deep and or lifting will cost us time as we shoot down the next straight towards Parabolica, so it's best to avoid having to do either. As we navigate Ascari, we want to use all of the apex curbing at each apex while avoiding the anti-cut curbs. We want to keep the car smooth and settled as we carry as much speed as we can on exit. We can use all of the exit curbing once again as we aim to minimize tire scrub and maximize exit speed. One thing to consider here if you are struggling through the Ascari chicane is to take the entries slower than you would otherwise want to. If you are running deep or having trouble with the car gripping through the corner or running into issues on exit, it really all starts at the entry. So if you are running into issues, remember our exit is more important than our entry here. We are shooting for a strong exit. So if we need to sacrifice a little on entry to get that strong exit for this long run down the straight towards Parabolica, we absolutely want to do that. The final corner is Parabolico, which we'll treat as a double apex, once again prioritizing our exit speed while trying to run the shortest possible line on exit. We start braking right around the end of the green astroturf on the left or the 50 board, and we want to angle into the corner aggressively as we slow the car into the first apex. Our goal here is to get all of the braking out of the way by the time we get to this first apex so we can get back on throttle and stay on throttle from this first apex onward so we get a really good launch out of Parabolica and back down the main straight. As we get back on throttle, we'll allow the car to drift out towards the edge of the track to reduce tire scrub and allow the car to rotate towards the second apex. We don't want to run too deep here because we want to minimize the total distance traveled, but if we stay too tight, we'll scrub off too much speed and it'll hinder our acceleration down the main straight. As the car starts to rotate, and the second apex comes into view, we can start to open up our hands to prepare for the run to the finish line. On exit here, you can run all the way to the pit wall if you'd like to, to shorten your run to the line. We didn't do that here, but that is something you should probably do on your qualifying laps when defending, heading down this straight and into turn one, or when drag racing to the finish line to complete your lap here at Monza. And before we go, I once again just want to shout out anyone who has subscribed to me already here on YouTube. If you haven't, please hit that button below. Uh, anyone who's liked or commented on these videos as well, it's a huge help for me uh, just to know how to improve these uh, and that you guys like them. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead and give me a follow on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash Pipa. Link to that in the description below. Come and hang out with me while I am racing live. And feel free to ask me questions there as well. We also do have a racing league that races on Thursdays if you're interested. Um, discounts on radness.com. Check out the description for all of those different links. But before we do go, I do want to talk about racing here at Monza a little bit. Odds are you're going to be defending from someone out out of a turn and going down a long straight at some point. If you want to take the defensive line, try to do that as early as possible to A, limit the other car's ability to kind of stick their nose in there, but B, to give them enough time to prepare for what they're going to do when they're trying to attack you. If you try to change lines last minute, getting really close to a braking zone, odds are they're not going to have time to react to you moving your line if that was their plan to attack on that line as well. And that's how big incidents happen. So, 
yeah, communicate with your car in a way that the people around you can understand is the key to surviving these situations. Obviously, a lot of people are just going to break late and run into the back of you, and there's not really much you could do about that. Uh, but do everything you can to communicate with your car to uh, let people know what you intend to do, and that will give you the best opportunity of survival. The other thing I'd suggest here is a lot of people are going to try to go uh, on crazy or different lines or attack in weird places around corners if they're getting frustrated. So try practicing off of the racing line. Try practicing on the defensive line uh, just to kind of get used to running your car there. The more comfortable you are running it on a different line, uh, the better you're going to be when you're put on that line in a racing situation. Anyway, um, that's it for me this week. Good luck in your races. Uh, and until I see you next time, take care of yourselves.